All right, in this notebook, uh, my code is pretty similar to the last one. Uh, but now, instead of um, instead of kind of guessing all these x values manually, uh, we're going to actually do real gradient descent by using a loop. And um, the other difference is, is to illustrate some different challenges that we'll face. Instead of just having an f function, um, I'm also going to be trying some g and h functions a little bit later. Um, so I'm ready to come down here, and you can see before I have these same functions uh, where I'm, I'm kind of doing the gradient descent and um, and trying a bunch of different values by hand. Um, I'm not going to have this code anymore. I'm not going to do that manually anymore. Um, I'm going to get rid of this as well. And, um, and let me just run this. There's nothing there now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a variable, x is 0. And, um, and I'm going to have a loop. I'm going to loop some number of times for i in range, um, I don't know, let's say three times. For starters, we'll eventually increase that. and um, and, and what I'm going to do is first I'm going to figure out well what is um, what is the gradient and uh, and maybe maybe to get this I should have this function actually return what the gradient is. Uh, let me let me just get that to be a regular float and um, and so I'm going to get the gradient down here. Gradient equals try this x value and um, and that will have plotted it right. So maybe I'm just going to do that and it tries the same thing three times. Uh, but now I should actually kind of change based on what that gradient is. Uh, remember that when the gradient is right, I'm sorry, when the gradient is negative, I want to move to bigger x values in order to minimize that that y value. So, so maybe the first version of this, which is a little bit naive, is I could do something like this. I could say if uh, gradient is less than zero, uh, then x should increase. And otherwise, well, what do I want to do? I guess in that other case, then uh, uh, x should decrease. So I, I can run this now, and um, and I see I'm getting closer. Let me let me try some more iterations. I'm going to try four. Um, I see I overshot a little bit. What if I'm doing a total of five iterations? You actually see that bounced back to two, right? So I'm, I'm kind of stuck here, right? If I just print off the x and the gradient, you see I kind of moved from uh, this slope at point 0.3 uh, to this slope at point 0.2, and then back to where I, I started, right? So it doesn't matter if I have 100, um, 100 of these. Well, it's not, not good enough, right? So, um, so that's not good. Um, let, let me put this back to 5. Um, the other thing I might try is, um, well, what if I try smaller steps each time? I'm going to do 0 0.5 steps. And um, and you see now I don't uh, I'm not kind of learning as fast I'm not as quickly reaching where I'd like so maybe I'll maybe do ten of these and um, and you see it's still not great right I'm still not quite hitting that that uh, final uh, value that I'm hoping for and um, hopefully what I, you're kind of intuiting from this is that uh, how big I'm stepping should really depend on how steep uh, the slope is if it's a really steep slope like that first time. Uh, we guess, then we probably want to move a lot. Otherwise, we might want to move a, a little, right? And um, and so I can see if this is uh, if this is um, negative, I'm making x bigger. If uh, if this is positive, I'm making it smaller. So so I could actually do something like this. I could say something like x minus equals uh, the gradient, right? I'm going to try that, and I actually see that that very quickly, right? I can make a big jump at first, and I take a tiny step, and and after just a few times, I'm right right there at the end, right? And, and honestly, I could have probably done this in about uh, three steps, three or, or perhaps four, okay? And, and so I won't be doing it in, in this uh, video or, or maybe at all this semester, but the other thing people will often do is instead of looping a fixed number of times, um, they'll loop until it seems that they've kind of stalled into the bottom and there's uh, no further improvement, right? So anyway, optimization, I won't deal with here. Okay, so that seems pretty good, right? I can kind of, uh, kind of um, reach what I'm hoping for. Um, so let me try a different function at this point. And uh, the other function I'm going to try is g. And uh, g is kind of a myster mystery to us. And so maybe I'll first just kind of try with one pass. And um, maybe I forgot to rerun this. I could have sworn I had it. Uh, if I run this now, okay, there I go. So um, that seems fine. So what, what if I try two, two times? What am I going to guess after this? Well, after that, let me actually just turn to this print 
right? You can see um, it overshot, and um, and uh, not only did it overshoot, but it actually got to be slightly worse. So what if I do three? Um, it overshoots again by even more, and it's kind of this unstable system until, well, you know, it's off, off the map, right? And so that's not good at all. Um, even though I'm kind of sensitive to this gradient, um, it's possible that this curve is kind of sharp enough that I bounce right out of it, right? And, um, and, and so this idea of kind of adjusting it based on the gradient was a good idea, but maybe I don't want to exactly move it by what the gradient is. Maybe I want to multiply uh, the gradient by um, some number to make it, you know, some maybe one tenth of what the gradient is. All right, so I'm going to do that. And uh, that works pretty well. I guess that's a little bit too small. What if I did like 0.3? 0.3, I'm finding it, um, uh, I'm getting there pretty, pretty quickly. Right, so that, that seems good. And so this number here that I'm just kind of making up, right, is, is what we'll typically call a learning rate, right? And so maybe I'll just have this in a variable. I'll say learning rate is 0 0.1. And let me put learning rate here. And I run that. And, um, and, and something to keep in mind is that a way to compensate for a small learning rate is to just increase the number of iterations that we do. Right, I do that and I can see, okay, well, I actually converge at a pretty good solution there uh, at the end, okay? And, and that would work too if I started at another point. Right? I mean, I could imagine starting over on uh, the right-hand side and then I kind of uh, descend the mountain from that angle, right? I still find that that minimum. Okay, so let me, let me try one more uh, function, which is um, h, right? So I'm gonna do h now and I'm gonna start at zero. And, um, and I'm gonna run this. Maybe I'll just do like 20, 20 iterations for now. And I see, okay, I kind of approach from the left and I, and I find that minimum. Um, what if I wanted to, and let, let me actually just do something here for a moment. Um, I am going to, when I'm all done, let me print off what the X and the Y values are. Okay, so I kind of hit that, that right there. And I'm just gonna make a note of this, right? I can make comparisons, right? So this is my x equals that and my y equals that. That was the minimum that I found, right? And um, and let me let me try something else. So I can start over if I want it two instead, and um, and I get to roughly the same thing, right? I mean, maybe if I have more iterations, right? If I have like forty iterations, I'm I'm getting roughly to that same same point. Um, now now here's something that's going to be kind of funny. This is kind of a tricky. Function, right? If I start at three, what do you know? It ends up that there's, um, you know, there's kind of two uh, valleys in this in this um, function, right? And it will find a different one um, depending on uh, on where I start, right? And we can actually see that the second one that it's finding is is better, right? Before my y was three point eight, and now it's about three point two, right? So. So this is a better um, kind of minimal than I started before. And so, so maybe let me just kind of uh, recap some of the lessons we have here, right? So starting point matters um, if there's lo multiple local minima. And, and maybe another way of saying that is, uh, or this is not quite saying the same thing, um, if it's not convex, right? Maybe I'll say it might matter. I don't want to say something too strong, right? It'll usually matter if it's not a convex function that's kind of like nicely shaped that funnels us right in. And another thing is, is, is a to-do, uh, stop when it seems we've found the best x. Okay, so that's kind of a trickier function. And then um, some of the really important functions in machine learning, it turns out, um, are convex, right? So, so this starting point is less of a matter of concern.